Someone on Twitter asked me to make a video about this fascinating article published in Nature on evolution of the so-called MS gene, the gene most associated with your risk of getting MS, hla drb one 1501 If you have one copy of this allele or gene version, you have a three-fold increased risk of MS. If you have two copies, you have an eight-fold increased risk of MS. Of course, in modern times, we think of it as a bad gene. After all, it increases your risk of an unfavorable disease. But this article argues that it may have been a good thing and may have been selected for in our ancestors, specifically in the steppe population of Eurasia, which influences a lot of modern societies, because it provided resistance to certain types of infections. So I'll explain a little bit about the gene, then I'll talk about the methodology of the study and their hypothesis for why this occurred. Now, they looked at a lot of different genes associated with MS. MS, but the gene most strongly linked to MS, hla drb one you can see that in various studies, it's more common in people with MS than without MS. For instance, 61% of people with MS in Sweden have at least one copy of the allele versus only 31% of people without MS. But you can see the prevalence of the gene varies considerably in different regions. For example, Ashkenazi Jews compared to Europeans have around half the risk of having having this allele, around 16%. This slide shows the function of the major histocompatibility complex type 2. You can see an antigen presenting cell on top and the cell membrane. This is a cell that gobbles up foreign material like proteins and then shows it to lymphocytes. Here you can see a T cell, a helper T cell with the T cell receptor. And the antigen presenting cell is using MHC2 to show this fragment of a peptide to your T cells. And it's known that variations in MHC class 2 influence your risk of infection, certain autoimmune diseases, and even rejection of organ transplants. No one knows exactly why this allele is linked to MS. One hypothesis is that the genetic change leads to more hydrophobic residues. So isoleucine, leucine, valine, these are fatty residues, and it may cause MHC to stick to certain myelin antigens like myelin basic protein, creating a stronger interaction and a greater immune response. Interestingly, although the gene influences your risk of MS, it doesn't influence the prognosis or severity of MS. This study looked at the probability of reaching moderate disability if you have MS with or without the gene, and it didn't matter. Prognosis was the same. But why is it here anyway? If the gene is deleterious in modern humans, why is it so common? Well, that's the whole point of this study. And here is their methodology. So they got genomic data from 86 ancient individuals. This is DNA from the remains of humans, and they got them from relatively recent individuals in the medieval and post-medieval periods from Denmark. And the samples date from around the 11th to the 18th century, so relatively recent. They also used a database of 1,664 ancient genomes from other studies. And this is a huge range going back to around 15,000 years, and it becomes increasingly rare to get a genome from human remains if you go very far back. They also looked at genomes of modern individuals. Then they created mitochondrial DNA haplogroups. So mitochondrial DNA is inherited asexually only through your mother, and that makes it a lot more simple than chromosomal evolution, and it helps for creating family trees. And of course, you can also see this on your 23andMe report. Now, I must admit that this article, I'm a medical doctor, not a geneticist or statistician, this article was way, way over my head. So I'm trusting that their methodology was good and their accuracy is good. And here are their results for different gene variants in different early human populations. And right away, you can see there's a huge outlier with many of these polymorphisms associated with MS being much more common in the step people. And we'll get into this group in a little bit. And they compared it to other groups at that time, Western hunter-gatherers, Eastern hunter-gatherers, Caucasus hunter-gatherers, farmers of the Neolithic period. And you can see this huge difference. And here is our friend, the single nucleotide polymorphism associated with hla drb one the gene most associated with MS risk. A big difference in this group. They also looked at the totality of genes associated with MS risk. They're actually 
actually hundreds of them, many with very minimal association with MS, and they created a combined MS genetic risk score, and you can see it was much higher in the steppe population. But who are the steppe people? Well, they lived on the vast plains of Eurasia millennia ago. They were known as the Yamnaya culture, and they were thought to be some of the early pastoral humans. They herded animals cattle, horses, and sheep, and depended on them to survive. They domesticated and rode horses long distances, and they were excellent archers and could shoot arrows from moving horses, and that made them great fighters, and they were successful in battle. This map shows the approximate movement of the Yamnaya culture, the steppe people, over time, and you can see they spread far and wide. They influenced a lot of different cultures, interbred with people, and influenced early modern civilization, both culturally and genetically, and you probably have some step DNA within you if you're watching this, unless you're 100% pure Australian Aborigine, because essentially these people and their descendants went all around the world. So let's take a closer look at the evolution of the MS gene. So the earliest human remains that contains this single nucleotide polymorphism that's most associated with risk of MS is in the area of modern Italy that dates to the Neolithic period, and it carbon-14 dates between 5,836 and 5,723 BCE. Now, through their fancy statistical analysis, the researchers determined that this gene used to be rare, but dramatically increased in prevalence between 5,000 and 2,000 BCE, not years ago, that's a typo. So there must have been some kind of selection. There must have been some reason this gene was more common. There must have been an advantage to have it at the time. And modern humans with more steppe ancestry have greater risk of MS. And this is a modern map of HLA-DRB1-1501 frequency, and you can see it's more common in areas of northern Europe like Sweden and Finland where MS is more common. Now be careful, they're confounders. This is also associated with sunlight exposure and low vitamin D levels, which are known risk factors for MS, but certainly there's an association. So the authors hypothesize that the steppe people were living in dense populations, raising animals, exposed to those animals all the time, and think about certain types of zoonotic infections, swine flu, malaria, that indirectly come from animals, and maybe these genes increase their risk with certain types of infections. Quote from the article, the late Neolithic and Bronze Age were a time of massively increased prevalence of infectious diseases in human populations owing to increased population density as well as contact with and consumption of domesticated animals and their products. And so, protection against these infections could have been very valuable. Now, it's impossible to know what pathogens they had. There's simply no preservation of pathogens in the fossil record or the remains record. It's just not possible to know what people died of back then. And in modern times, HLA-DRB1-1501, and to my knowledge, other HLA variants associated with MS aren't significantly associated with any particular infections. We know that that people with MS have a higher rate of mono and testing positive for antibodies against Epstein-Barr virus, suggesting prior infection with this virus. But that may be because the virus is part of the cause of MS, not because of differences in the immune system. The idea that a gene can be both good and bad is not so foreign. If you think about the gene that causes sickle cell anemia, if you have two copies of it, you get sickle cell disease, which can certainly be harmful. But if you have one copy, you're immune to malaria, and most people with one copy don't have significant symptoms. So genes can be both good and bad. And of course, our ancestors probably didn't really get much multiple sclerosis. There's a lot of evidence that MS is a modern disease. The first descriptions of it are really after 1000 AD, and it was probably extremely rare until relatively recently, perhaps due to environmental factors like sunlight 
fluoride exposure and diet. Anyway, I know that this article isn't necessarily actionable. You can't necessarily do anything about it, but it's very interesting and perhaps will stimulate further research on the topic. And maybe it's encouraging that there could be some good things about having genes that are linked to harmful diseases like MS. I'd be interested to know what you think, if you like this type of video, or if you have ideas for other videos.